Welcome to LORIS, a web-based neuroimaging data management platform. This video presents a basic introduction to LORIS covering the behavioral components, followed by the imaging side including visualization and quality control, and finally delving into data querying and data dissemination. For details on LORIS functionality, how to obtain LORIS, and the many LORIS features not covered in this video, please visit our website www.loris.ca. First, a little bit of background about LORIS. LORIS is a modular system that integrates all aspects of a multi-site study from data acquisition and storage to processing and dissemination. Through a standard web browser, users can perform a wide variety of tasks such as data entry, 3D image visualization, and data querying. LORIS also offers a secure streamlined platform that seamlessly stores and links large neuroimaging, clinical, and genetic data sets. Please visit our demonstration database at https colon slash slash demo.loris.ca and log in with the username demo and password also demo. One word, all lowercase. Please note that LORIS is designed to work best with a platform independent browser such as Chrome. Once inside the database, you'll first see the home screen that can be customized with the information for your particular study. First, we'll cover the behavioral side of the LORIS database, where clinical, psychometric, and behavioral measures are stored. Then we'll focus on other aspects of the database. From the menu bar along the top of the screen, under the Candidate menu, you can either register a new candidate profile for your study, or you can click on Access Profile to view the list of existing candidates and behavioral or clinical data already entered for your study. This will bring you to a screen where you'll see all of the study subjects that have been registered in LORIS to date. This view shows metadata about each subject that can be filtered as well as sorted by any column such as site or subproject or by subject ID. Clicking on any candidate ID will take you to a list of all of that candidate's data collection time points in your longitudinal study. At top, you will see buttons to create a new time point and view or edit metadata about this candidate. Clicking on one of the time point labels will display the battery of behavioral and clinical instruments for that subject at that time point. Demographic information and other metadata is displayed at the top of the page and tracks the flow of subject data through the study stages from screening to visit to approval. There are some flags in the left hand column that are used to indicate time point status and quality control steps applied to this time point. As an example, let's take a look at the ACE subject medical history form. Although this form has been marked as complete in the left sidebar, we'll click on in progress to demonstrate how data entry works. Personnel performing data entry select or enter responses for each question on the form. Not answered is always an option to indicate for statistical purposes that data is not available for any given item. Once all questions have been answered at the bottom of the form, click on Save Data, and data should be saved including any calculated scoring or calculated fields such as age. If there are any data entry errors, meaning data was missed or entered inappropriately, the form will not save in the database. Instead, an error message will be printed at the top, and within the form, error messages will be highlighted beside the field that requires correction. Once data entry is done, administration and validity flags can be set in the left sidebar and the form can be marked as complete. Longer instruments may split data entry up over several pages. One important tool on the behavioral database side is our behavioral feedback module. To view it, click on the pencil icon in the menu bar and it will appear as a pop-up so that feedback can be viewed in parallel with any page in the database. Here users can view and enter feedback comments or flag errors of various types, such as scoring errors in a specific instrument or larger data quality issues that might apply across a candidate's time point data set. As you navigate between pages in the behavioral side of LORIS, the feedback module will dynamically display all feedback items relevant to the page you're looking at. LORIS also provides the ability to perform double data entry, which is the practice of entering each instrument data set twice in duplicate forms. Double data entry is highly effective for reducing the risk of errors in manual data entry. 
Once data entry is complete for a given instrument, the next step in LORIS is to review and resolve any discrepancies generated during data entry on that instrument using a special tool called the Conflict Resolver. Located under the Clinical menu, the Conflict Resolver module displays all double data entry conflicts and can be filtered by instrument or by site. This module enables users to resolve any data entry conflicts directly just with a few clicks by selecting the correct answer for each data item. That explains double data entry in the Conflict Resolver manual, just a few of the features LORIS uses for quality control on the behavioral side. Next, we'll show how clinical and behavioral instrument forms are added into LORIS. Instruments are added into the database in one of two ways. The first method is via the Instrument Builder module, found under the Admin section, this module provides a user-friendly way for users to create and code their own test forms with no technical knowledge. For each question in your form, select a field type and enter the question details, adding each response to the form as you go. Field types include text boxes, text areas for larger comment fields, drop-down select boxes, multi-select boxes, dates, and numeric fields. Once all fields have been entered, click the Preview button to view the form in New Browser tab. Under the Save Instrument section of the Instrument Builder, enter an instrument name, then validate the form, and finally save the form, which will download a copy to your local computer. From there, the instrument can be added to the LORIS backend through a few quick steps detailed in the LORIS Developer's Guide. Scoring and other calculations can be added via script written in many common scripting languages. Since LORIS is open source, a developer also has the ability to edit the PHP codebase in order to manually create or edit instruments directly. Many other modules are available on the behavioral side of the LORIS database, and we encourage you to visit the demonstration database as well as our website www.loris.ca for more information. This brings us to the imaging side of the database. LORIS was originally built as a neuroimaging database for MRI data acquisition and has been developed and extended over time to handle numerous imaging modalities and formats, including three-dimensional and four-dimensional data sets. The imaging browser has three important functions, storing and organizing imaging data, visualization, and quality control. From the imaging browser's front page, click Submit to view a list of all imaging data sets stored in LORIS. The list can be filtered and sorted by metadata fields such as site, candidate ID, or quality control status. Clicking on any cell under the links column, for example native, will bring you to the scan acquisition page which displays the selected imaging data in detail, scan by scan. In this case, it shows all native scans collected at this time point for this candidate. All scans are stored and automatically tagged in the database with their imaging parameters including protocol details such as slice thickness and repetition time for MRI volumes. In addition, raw DICOM files are also packaged and stored alongside MIG files and conversion to other imaging formats such as NIFTIs is available as well. Within the scan acquisition page, each individual scan can be downloaded directly to your desktop by clicking on the download link. Clicking on the image will launch the visualization tool called Brain Browser. In Brain Browser's volume viewer window, you'll see a triplanar depiction of the volume on which you can zoom in and out, navigate around the volume in all directions, move slice by slice, capture slices, and change threshold values. This is useful for the radiological review process, which is a special separate module in LORIS, not covered in this video. It's also useful for visual quality control of scans, no installation of special software on your local machine is required, simply an up-to-date web browser. 
Two volumes can also be overlaid to check for discrepancies between volumes. The overlaid images are shown in the third column on the right. Quality control is performed directly in the imaging browser through controls which allow you to pass or fail each scan based on visible artifacts in the images. Once each scan has been evaluated by quality control personnel, the entire visit can then be marked as pass or fail. Detailed quality control feedback is stored in the database in a structured manner according to common artifacts, such as movement and intensity, as well as other regularly occurring issues. An important feature of LORIS is that all QC results can be later queried alongside the data. LORIS has many project management tools for at-a-glance status reporting and monitoring the flow of data in your study. One of the key tools for tracking the progress of imaging data acquisition is the Imaging Statistics page within the Database Statistics module which is located under the Reports menu. Various statistics submodules exist for demographic, behavioral and other categories of data. As an example, the Imaging Statistics tab gives a bird-eye view of how many scans were collected, loaded into LORIS, and passed QC, which is important for rapid identification of any missing or poor quality data sets. The final module we'll be covering in this video is the data querying tool, which is used for data extraction and dissemination. After the data has been collected, organized, and inserted into the database, downloading the data in an easily accessible and human-readable format is the final piece of the data management puzzle. As an example, we will load a query that has previously been saved inside the querying tool. Under the Define Fields tab, you can add or remove any fields from your query. As you can see, fields are organized by categories such as demographics or instrument name. Under Define Filters, any filter can be applied to the query. What that means is that any data element can be used to restrict the data results, for example, gender or site name. To view query results, click on Run Query. By default, the results will be displayed cross-sectionally with one row per time point. Queries can also be run longitudinally, displaying data from all visits in a single row. Click on Download Table as CSV to download the query results to your desktop. Basic statistical tools are also available for simple analyses and data quality checking. Min, max, standard deviation, and other calculations are shown, and histograms can be generated on any numerical column of choice. This concludes our introductory video about LORIS, briefly covering its basic capabilities for data storage, quality control, dissemination, and project management. Thanks for watching our video. For more information on the many features of LORIS not covered in this video, how LORIS works, and how to get LORIS, please visit our website at www.loris.ca.